This is Al Swimmer. Came all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. He's a good friend of mine because he understands the magnitude of this technology. This is Diane. She's a student at North Texas University. She's going to be a teacher, and she wants to ask some questions. <clears throat> what questions do you like right, to ask? So <coughs> my main question is, I have this huge machine, but how are you going to make it to where it can be in a household? Like, how much is it going to cost? Is it going to be the small machine? And what are you going to do? Okay. Now, now Diane's asking the question, <clears throat> how big is this machine going to be that runs a house? <clears throat> It may be about one and a half times as big as this machine right here. <clears throat> There's something else we will do. We will take this same technology and make motors that go in every washer, every air conditioner, every device that goes in your refrigerator, every device that goes in your house and reduce your power bill. That's what this thing will do. But getting that cost down cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. Cheaper. Pretty much all the way. All the way to nothing. And this, it costs, you said it costs about 10000 to put it in a home. <coughs> uh, yeah, but I want to get it down even cheaper than that. Not just... I mean, if you think about it, that's how much you pay in like three years with electric bills. Exactly. So it pays so off itself. And it's, really cool. you might tell them how long it'll last. Oh, yeah. Nothing, long nothing long wears out. It'll last. You only think the wear out of that is two bearings in that system. Now, we got brushes on that that will wear out eventually, <clears throat> but with diodes, you can do away with the brushes that you don't even need them. But they'll last for a good 20 or 30 years. You know, and, so, and they don't cost anything to replace them. <clears throat> but the major part of this motor will last long past your lifetime. Lasting for that long, you know, what you're putting into it, it's gonna make sense. <laughs> Now, I'm going to show y'all something else. There's a law called Kershaw's Law. It says, the second law says that if <clears throat> you have loads in a system, you'll have a voltage drop across each one of them. But if you add up all the voltage drops across the system, it will equal the input voltage. <clears throat> in fact, when they write out the equation, it says this, the difference between the input voltage and the voltage drops across the system is zero meaning it won't be a difference. You can't get a difference. They also, that second law is to verify the conservation of energy. Well, I'm gonna show you a violation of it right now. <clears throat> now, what I have is a capacitor in line, parallel with this motor, parallel with it. Now, y'all come here. Diane, you hold this for them. Let's see, I gotta go just a little bit closer. All right, watch it. Well, man, I know it's gonna show overloaded. Let me use this meter. What exactly is this showing? This is... It's gonna show you voltage. Mm -hmm. All right. It's like when it's negative, it's... Yeah, but watch. Right. That shows overload. <laughs> yeah. Call it out. Overload, it goes up to 9.0 and then 10 and then overload. All right, now overload is a thousand volts. I'm sorry, 900. Yeah. Overload is a thousand volts. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to use this other meter. Now it goes up to 80,000 volts. Okay. All right, now you just hold that again. Okay. This holds up to how much? Now see, this will show you 0.1, but you got to multiply it yeah. times a thousand. Whatever you read, you got to multiply it times a thousand. So he's reading the voltage from the capacitor now. All right, call out what you see. Time a thousand. Time a thousand. Going up to 10, 8,000, 7,000, 10, <laughs> that's like 10,000. Right. See, that's 7, which is 700, uh, 900, when he says point, and I see, see that one? A yeah, one is over a thousand. Okay, there's 900, 1,000 again, 900. All right. So now this voltage is greater, because <clears throat> we'll, let's go over here with the same meter and measure <clears throat> this voltage on this battery pack. <clears throat> now you won't see that. Well, let's see. All right, now what you got? Uh, like 500, 400, 
Yeah. All right, see, that's almost double of what this is. 500 to 400, and you had 900 to 1,000 over there. Now that shows a violation of Kershaw's second law. And now <clears throat> you know that that's true. That's true. <clears throat> now any scientist knows this, but my point is you're seeing something that is impossible. Al comes here all the way from Phoenix because he knows it's for real. Well, Al, what can we say to <clears throat> make young people understand they got to get behind this? I think first we ought to say that most people don't use their God-given powers of thinking for themselves. And that this is one time when they really should. I mean, if, instead of listening to somebody else, just think about what Joseph told you about the size of the battery of the amps that are in the battery that are running this machine. Because it is something really different. You don't really have anything to base it on to compare it with, with the old motors, because they're running on amperage. This one's running on voltage. It's a completely different story. So you, don't, you shouldn't go to any authorities to find out about it, because the authorities aren't authorities on this. The authority is right here. You saw that young man try to turn that shaft, and he was straining just to try to move it with one hand from a dead stop. Now that one little battery runs this pump like it ain't spit. That's the magnitude of what you're looking at. Now the, the motor itself is unbiased. It don't care what you hook it to. If you give it enough voltage, it'll run anything that you want to put to it. I think you might also point out how almost effortless the pump is working. Sometimes you see a pump working and it's really working hard because of it, but it's so smooth. This really proves it good if you ask me. I think this is better than the front. You, know, you can tell what's going on here. It'll change the world if we can get it out there. That's all we have to do, get it out there. Now, we put an amp meter in the line to see what that current is. Now, this is changing constantly. And most of the time, it's an extremely low power. I have fixed this so that it'll show you point zero, 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 zero right now. Now this goes from point zero to point four. The current is extremely low. This thing shows you it's running off a of voltage. It's not running off a of current. Dead batteries have voltage capacity, but they have no current capacity. I can run that machine off of dead nine volt batteries. It takes no power to produce voltage. I'll tell them what would happen if we turned this up to 10,000 revolutions a minute. The power this thing would have. It would run a whole city without any problem as far as, as, far as the power requirements go. That's the magnitude of this because we're converting mass into energy on a 100% conversion process. The current from that battery is not running that machine. This meter is telling you it's not running the machine. It shows you in spades everything that the scientists have screamed at y'all. This is ready for mass production.